Do you want to increase your skills in outdoor nature photography? I'm Alaskan photographer Jeff Schultz and today I'm going to show you a way you can simply and affordably take your skills to the next level right where you're at in your own backyard practically. Feel free to contact me at any time from the links below and let's chat about your photography. When I was 14 years old I really knew that I wanted to be a photographer and who wouldn't want to be a National Geographic photographer at that age? So I wrote to the National Geographic Society, to the photo department there, photo editor by the name of Dean Conger. I wrote to him and I said, what does it take to be a National Geographic photographer? And it was so cool, he wrote me back on National Geographic letterhead and he said, Jeff, if you want to be a photographer for National Geographic, let me tell you a few things. And one of the things he told me is he said, we are up to our eyeballs in photographers but we're up to our ankles in good ideas. So he told me to do a couple of different things. First, he said, find something that I'm really interested in, whether that be biology, zoology, uh, electricity, whatever it is, whatever I have a passion for. He said, go to college and learn everything you possibly can about that subject. And then you can use that information to create a photo essay. Um, he said something along the lines of, take what you've learned and find photos that nobody else has done before. Look for that picture, create the picture in your mind's eye, and then create it in the camera of something that would show off and explain what you're talking about, what that subject is. He said the first step in doing good photography is to figure out what you want to do before you shoot it. Don't just go out there haphazardly and try to make photos. Certainly that's not a bad way to do it. I do it oftentimes, but he thought that half the battle was making an idea happen in your mind before you pick up the camera. In any case, I'm not suggesting that you go to college to learn about anything in particular, but I do suggest that you practice your photography. It's a great way to learn how to do it. You know, on my photo tours, a lot of people come out there and they love photography, but they don't do it often enough to get in the habit of, of knowing what f-stop to use, focal length, what shutter speeds, in order to create the right type of photo. And so it's just a matter of practicing. So I suggest you come up with some subject that you like. Maybe it's near your home. Uh, maybe it's just cracks in the sidewalk. Maybe it's anything in particular that you like. In any case, create a photo story from that and while you're doing it you practice you practice your photography so what turned me on to this idea was Dean Conger at National Geographic but just recently I was out uh, photographing in the forest I had some time to kill before one of my flights to a remote spot and so I'm in a forest similar to this where there's a whole bunch of this devil's club here which is a it's a nasty little plant that'll ruin your day if you touch it just wrong. In any case, I was out on this forest and by that time the Devil's Club was this tall. It was above my head. And I saw this canopy and as you can see in this picture here, it just made for a unique photograph. So I took my time and I photographed this very well because I had not seen a photo similar to this before. So I took my time to make photos of it. So then I thought to myself, well, what a cool project to just do something on Devil's Club. It's really simple. So I suggest you find something in your backyard that's easily accessed or something that you're really intrigued about and then create a photo essay. You know, when you look at National Geographic articles and you look at their photos or any other magazine for that matter, they're typically photographing the big picture where you can see the big landscape, a whole lot of ground. Maybe it's a wide angle, maybe it's a telephoto, it doesn't really matter, but it shows a whole lot of area. And then the next shot's gonna be something medium, something a little bit closer, not so wide. And then they'll shoot the close-up. Maybe the close-up's a portrait of a person's eyeball. Maybe it's a, a, a leaf or, or a crack in the sidewalk, whatever it is. But in any case, that's the idea behind a photo essay, is creating a sense of place for the reader to look at and also the details of it. One of my clients, um, who struggles with composition, she's an engineer, she 
asked me, well, Jeff, how do you march into a place and find the photo in that? I mean, how do you march into a place like this with all this Devil's Club and make a picture? So that's what I want to do with you today is to march into a place like this with Devil's Club and find a few compositions and then practice. And when you do come up with this self-assignment, it doesn't have to be done in one day or one week or one month. You can do something like I hope to do with Devil's Club and do it over the course of a year, over the course of the life cycle of the Devil's Club, where you have it sp sprouting up in spring, you have the berries coming out in a few months from now, and, and you just have various aspects of it in different locations. Or you can do it all in one day. That's a really good way to hone your skills. Um, I mean, what about, like, I'm thinking about this Devil's Club. What about if I did a long exposure with it when the, when the wind is blowing so you could see a little bit of movement? What if I shot it from behind with the sun looking through the veins so you could see the detail of that? What if I shot it from above so it was just a blanket of greenery? So that's, the idea here is just to come up with something unique and different. And then honing your skills, that's about the depth of field and about hyperfocal distance and about the focal length of the lens, how much depth of field you have. Maybe you only want a little tiny bit. Maybe you want a lot. But that's where you get to practice and make something different. And another cool option, you know, what you might try to do when you do this self-assignment is to only use one lens, one lens only. Could you imagine walking into this field of Devil's Club and only shooting like with a 50 millimeter lens. That's all you have. That really makes life a little more exciting and you can really dial in your skills. Or you're shooting just with a telephoto. That's a lot harder, but it can still be done. So try that idea too. And one thing to bear in mind when you do this self-assignment, um, especially like something like this, like Devil's Club, this would be great to do on a cloudy day. Oftentimes people ask me, well, what can I photograph on a cloudy day? anything you want. Landscapes are great on a cloudy day. Portraits are especially good. So don't think you need a bright sunny day to create good photos. You don't. So my self-assignment today is to just get in here with this Devil's Club and try making a number of different compositions. I'm just looking around, marching into the spot like I thought, and seeing what I can find. So follow along and look over my shoulder and let's see what we can do together here. So what if I get down really low and just make it so the sun is barely coming through? Now, because of the way the sun is, I think if I use F16 to get the sun burst, that's going to help. So, that so as I'm composing the image, I move the camera just slightly in order to get the sun burst like this, which I think looks really cool. And then just getting a little bit closer to get closer to these veins and the water droplets. What about that? and then super close, trying to get a number of different compositions so that later on this will all work into my photo essay. So as I walk into this Devil's Club menagerie, I'm just looking for some, something unique, something a little bit different. I have a 70 to 200 on one body and a 24 to 105 on another. And I just, I see this, the green berries here I see a drip of water on this little leaf here. I'm gonna try focusing on that leaf manually. And I shoot that shot and it's just way too busy. Way, way, way too busy. I see this blade of grass behind it, which is distracting. So I'm gonna pluck that off. And there's still way too much, too busy of a background. So what can I do? Again, this is where it really comes in handy I'm practicing right so I look on here and I go go well there's too much depth of field still so how do you eliminate depth of field you go wide open you go as close as you can and then use a telephoto lens because a telephoto lens such as a 200 gives you a lot less depth of field especially when you focus in close now, because I'm using a 200 millimeter lens, I want to use put the camera on a tripod for this because it's a very 
delicate composition. I can't move much. So, as I always like to do when setting up a tripod, is let's find the angle first. I don't want anything bright in the background because the sun's back there. So I'm moving around trying to find just the right angle. But I do like these leaves in the foreground that will be out of focus. Kind of gives a little sense of depth to it. Then I set the tripod up just a few inches below where I want to be and then adjust the center column ever so slightly. Now we're talking. Nice leading line leading up to the image. I like that. Nothing fancy, it's not going to win a prize, but it's a neat image. Now look what I see over here on the left. Right from my vantage point, I see all these drips on the stock. I'm not sure the exact angle. There's a bunch of crud in the way that really distracts from the frame. If I can get in there and crop it appropriately, that would look pretty cool. Because you also see the barbs on the stock. That talks about Devil's Club. So that's something different. Why not do something different? So it's just a matter of getting nice and tight on this, and that cleaned up the background really well, adding to the amount of variety in this photo essay. Ooh, now, here's another good one. You just have to look around, and you know, it's marching into this field, just looking around to see what looks cool. Now, I look from there down to here, here, and I see the spikes now. They're yellow spikes against this dark green leaf. So, let's make that a photo. Now, isn't that going to look cool when we crop in on it just a little bit? This would be one where we want a lot of, well, if we get a lot of depth of field with this for the spikes, then we get the leaf in focus in the background, which we don't want. So what's the trick there? The trick there is to get on the same plane as the spikes. So I'd want to shoot so that the plane of the film or plane of the back of the camera is parallel to the spikes. That way, all the spikes will be in focus. This is one of those times where I'm just trying to get a decent frame, not worried totally about the composition, and I can adjust composition back in post-processing. So just with 15 minutes around here, I got three different types of photos all within, you know, two feet of each other, just by looking around, by marching into the spot and going, how does that look? Matter of fact, if I look over here, now I have this leaf with water on it and it's plopped over, like it's drooping, like it's sad. So let's see what that's all about. And here's my simple shot of the droopy leaf that seems sad with water drops on it, just making a little different photo essay image. The idea here is that I want to get just a leaf with a little bit of water. And having something dark in the background makes it so it really stands out, as opposed to getting another leaf in the background which just distracts from the frame. Just another super, super simple Devil's Club image for the photo essay. So it's fun just to get out, get some therapy, and practice the different types of photography you've learned. Up close and personal stuff, a lot of depth of field, shallow depth of field, telephoto. Just practice and practice and practice. So here's the key takeaways from this video. First, Think of a self-assignment, something that you're interested in or something that you know a lot about. If you're only interested in it, do the research and find out what it's all about. Then take the time to create in your mind's eye some photos that you think would be cool. Research, do some Google image searches and research what images are already out there. I used to do this with my stock photo agency. You know, we did a lot of photography for the tourism industry, especially fishing. And so I suggested, well, you go look at what kind of great salmon fishing photos there are, for instance. 
but don't recreate what somebody else has already done. Do something completely different. So I suggested to a photographer that he get a split above water and below water image of a salmon getting hooked in the mouth with a lure. And that took a lot of work. It took a lot of work to get that type of a shot. But he did it and it turned out to be a good photo, a very good photo. Think of something completely different that you haven't seen before. And then go out and shoot, as we say, march into a place and look for that great photo, whatever it is. And while you're there, practice what you've learned. Practice the hyperfocal distance rule. Practice using a telephoto lens with just a shallow depth of field. Find that photo that's going to tell a story that's going to grab the reader's attention. And finally, get an objective opinion on your images after they're done. And before you do that, be ruthless in your photo editing. Take whatever it is, take your 50 or 100 images and whittle them down to only six. Six photos that tell a complete story about that subject. Then take those six photos and only those six and send them to a professional photographer. Send them to me to take a look at. Or find somebody at your camera club, somebody you trust, but not necessarily a friend, because a friend's going to tell you, oh, everything's great. Find someone that's very objective, but has the skill to do that. And then just see what people think. You know, it's not about making a photo that is going to make a lot of money. With this Devil's Club assignment I did, this isn't going to make money. It's going to be fun to show people the Devil's Club. I'm going to be proud of that, I hope, of the images that I create. But ultimately, it's not going to make me money. And that's not the point. This is just good therapy for me, right? Being out here in nature and enjoying all this. Okay, so now it's time for you to take the next step, which is creating your own self-assignment, whatever that is. And then send the photos to me. I'd love to critique the photos or at least see them and see what you've done. And take a look at what I have to offer here on my website for doing online critiquing or even teaching you photography via Zoom meetings. Or please come to Alaska on one of my photo tours. It's a great place to be and you can photograph your own Devil's Club. Mm -hmm.